Amen. Praise God. Amen. I, I've, I've covered about five or six, I think five deadly sins already in this church. We talk about pride, we talk about lust, we talk about gluttony, greed, and last month we talk about laziness. So these are some of the uh, difficult issues we wrestle with in life. And uh, church, uh, desert fathers uh, call them the deadly sins. So this morning, I want to talk about wrath, like another difficult area to talk about this morning, all right? Wow, look at that, uncontrollable anger. We're going to look at some of the pictures here, uh, are very uh, strong pictures, but sometimes anger may not be that uncontrollable, but we still have anger, silent anger, okay? So there are different stages of anger. So anger is an area that uh, the, the church desert fathers say is a, is a deadly hindrance in our relationship with God and relationship with others as well, all right? It, it, it's not easy to talk about anger because uh, a lot of times we think it's not my fault ma. <laughs> for me to get angry. Uh, it's it, the struggle of even many men of God. Uh, I, I know of some men of God are very hot-tempered. I, I've read about John Sung, not my relative, the John Sung from China. I got one John Sung with my son, but this John Sung is a preacher from China. <laughs> he's a very vibrant preacher. He's a, he's, he has come to Malaysia, especially in, in Sitiawan, in Singapore. Is, there's a book written by him. It's called The Flame of God in the Far East, says John Sung. But he's a very hot, hot-tempered man. I uh, can be very hot-tempered, can be very aggressive. Uh, right? So even men of God do struggle about anger. So anger is a sin that many, many times we justify our anger. Maybe we, in, we inherited it. <laughs> it's not my fault. A- everyone else seems to have this problem of anger. So this is not easy to talk about. So anger is a, a universal problem. So it's not limited to age or culture. Not necessary older or younger or little kids don't have anger, so it's not limited. And also not limited to culture. All right. Some culture may be more serene, some more aggressive, but sometimes in the midst of the culture, you see of anger, right? Uh, or race or gender, economic level and social status. In other words, it is a, a situation that many people can face. Whether you're Chinese, uh, Indian or Malay or Eurasian or Filipino or Myanmar, Myanmar people, but not limited to a particular race or genders. All right, you can see a lot of women shouting in this particular PowerPoint, but not necessarily women, men. In fact, men are one of the worst. <laughs> All right, race or gender or economic level doesn't mean the rich or poor, you don't have anger. Or social status in life. You may be a professional, you may be an ordinary person, you can still, can still have anger. Whether you're educational or lack of it. Okay, so in that sense, all of us can succumb to anger. It's a universal problem. Who, who are we angry with today? This morning. I was very angry with the traffic jam in Malacca <laughs> on the way here. Especially the one supposed to go fast lane, go slow. Huh? Oh, come on, man, there are three lanes and then after surround one, four lanes, but the slow. All right. So who are you angry this morning? Maybe you're angry with your spouse. Oh, yo, yo, this is very dangerous. You are angry with your spouse, you're very susas, and you sleep together in the same bed, in the same house, in the same room, and you meet every day if you're angry with your spouse. It's a challenge, right? Or you're angry with your children. Oh, raise your children up and they are disrespectful or disobedient or they are rebellious. Oh, oh, we're angry with parents. Oh, our parents, uh, and we blame them for raising up wrongly. Oh, we're angry with ourselves. Sometimes we do that, right? Nothing, nobody is, is, is ourselves, our shortcoming. We make wrong choices, wrong mistakes, and we're angry with ourselves. Oh, we're angry with the government. Oh, sometimes I'm very angry with the government. Wrong policy, lah. Create all kinds of problems. Malaysia is a beautiful country apart from the government. No. <laughs> uh, 
Government is the problem. Right? There's no perfect government, let me tell you. Not America, not Britain, etc. Right? Or we're angry with the ju judiciary system. The judges, they don't make good uh, judgments and they are prejudiced and they are biased. Or we're angry with the police. Sometimes we're really angry with the police, no? They take advantage, especially of the migrants and the illegals and get them and, and get bribery and corruption. I'm really angry with them because the, those migrants are already in trouble. I know I have two Pakistani in the, in the church uh, upstairs and sometimes when they are sick, uh, we help them. But the police cut out them. They somehow they know how to identify them and they will just want money. So we're angry with the police. We're angry with the pastor. Oh man, all right. this morning, you, you, those are angry with the pastor, you need to come altar. Of course, you're not angry with me, like you're angry with Pastor Albert only, right? Angry with the pastor because he's the one preaching, you know. He's preaching about my sin problem. La. He's not understanding. La. Come on, pastor. Angry with the pastor is okay. The worst kind of people we're angry with? God. You're angry with God? No, there are a lot of people who are angry with God, right? Jonah was angry with God. And there are different people that are they're going through difficulties and say, Why God? Why are you allow this to happen in my life? Why you allow the accident or, or, or bereavement? Sometimes we are angry with God inside. We dare not say outside only. If we are Catholics, we go to the confession booth and hide ourselves and con confess to the priest. So there, there are many cases in our life we can be and can go on and on and on. There are many people that you get angry with, right? And resolve anger is a very serious issue. Anger that is not resolved inside of us, it is not settled. It's a very serious issue. All right, un un unresolved anger. For example, if the, the, you have an anger problem, it will really damage your marriage. You will destroy your marriage because you, you never know when your, your spouse will erupt, right? There's always a tension button there. Or your family can also go to difficulties if there's an anger problem. Or juvenile delinquency. And, ch and children, teenagers are raised up with angry families. They already affect their childhood. All right, so really, it really destroys. It's a very serious issue. It destroys our health, right? You're angry, you have high blood pressure, you have gastric problem, you have what else? You have backache, la, headache, la, everything. How the doctor give you medicine for this? You cannot solve one, isn't it? All right, health problems. Or you have, you have productivity in your workplace. A lot of people, they're intelligent, they got honor rolls in their degree, they have PhD, but they cannot get along in a working life. Cannot work long because they have relationship problem, they have anger problem. Also, when you're angry, of course, murder. Usually, anger comes first and then the manifestation is murder and vengeance and war. Why do you think there's so many wars today? And you, you cannot solve the Palestinian problem by killing them, you know. By killing them and, and massacring them, the next generation will get angry and vengeance will never end. And now we've got, uh, what's it, what's now? What's the country now? Iran attacking Israel and Israel retaliating. The, the war problem in this world is an anger problem, really. It's a manifestation of the leaders that are angry. So you can't solve the war problem because anger is an issue, unresolved issue. I, somebody came to this uh, Billy Sunday. Billy Sunday is the old time preacher, not Billy Graham, Billy Sunday. And he, he told Billy Sunday, I, I have no problem being Sunday. I, I blow up and then it's all over. Have you ever heard of people there? I'm hot tempered, but very short only. Short fuse only. Boom, finish. Billy Sunday's answer to for this short fuse guy is this. So that's a shotgun. Shoot somebody, finish. The guy died. So this, this, this is a very serious issue because to us, we just let go. And we let go and many people get injured for the rest of their life. Okay, uh, why do I get mad so easily? There are many reasons. Hungry man is an angry man. <laughs> you're hungry, you're angry. When you're stressful, angry. That's why in the Klang Valley, you know, many people are angry. Very stressful. Come to Malacca, I tell you, you live long. All right? If you're nervous, you're angry. If you're sad, you're angry. When you're fatigued, you're tired, you're angry. You're ill, you're bored, you're envious. Of course, you'll get angry when somebody is blessed. You have financial pressure and unresolved past issues. So there are many, 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 many reasons why a person gets angry, right? 
further on, all right? When there's an unfair situation and it's not your fault, somebody else's fault, you've been wrongly accused and you got into trouble and you go to jail for the rest of your life, you're angry, really angry. Or your, your, your rights have been violated. All right, then nowadays we are more, we are more in an individualized society. You've got my rights, you've got your rights. As long as my rights are not violated, it's okay. But you violate my personal rights, I'll fight for it. I'll fight for it. Um, personal right, rights violated. And very often leads to either active or passive anger. Some people react very fast. Active anger. Some people quiet inside them. Yeah, in front very nice, but inside there's a burning volcano there, all right? There's a passive, and, and sometimes it is, either you assault or withdraw. Assault, you react and you fight, but the one, withdraw, isolate, don't talk, silent treatment and go somewhere else, and then you are angry there, you're still angry. And this is a various situation we get angry, right? Uh, why cannot I control my temper? That's a question we're going to ask ourselves. How, how does one manifest anger? What is anger? Anger is, is actually an antagonistic emotion. All right? Against the wrongdoer. Somebody has done you wrong and you're, you're, you're angry. You, you manifest your emotion. It's negative. It's antagonistic. All right? Uh, like a child. A, ch- a child's tend to me. You've seen them everywhere, right? In the supermarket, in the shopping mall, in the school, in the church sometimes. They are kicking, they are they're crying, they are rolling on the floor, and they are screaming. Childhood, childish tantrums. They, they are not mature enough, they cannot handle, uh, they are frustrated, their needs are not met, and then they lose their temper, and they manifest themselves. So that's how children, oh, what about adults? What about adults? Oh, this is a doubt. How does adult... Facial expression, voice tone, physical violence, etc. So instead of rolling on the floor, we do have our adult tantrums. The face, you know how an angry man looks like, an angry woman, the face, uh, the eye, eyeball, the tone of voice. I'm not angry, they say. I'm not angry. I'm not angry. Tone of voice, huh? Oh, tone of voice. The, the tense muscle, the stern eyes, no, the angry eyes, no. No, the, the church, my church members knows when I'm angry. You see my eyes now, really. <laughs> or, or increased pulse rate. You know, pulse rate, that's why you get heart attack when you're angry. Huh? You're not careful, you fall flat. Pulse rate goes up. And of course, deep breathing. <laughs> I'm not angry. But yeah, so these are all manifestations. Most of the time we can see. Most of the time we know who are the angry guys. In our family, in our marriage, in our children, etc. We can see in the church sometimes as well. All right. It can be manifested if we are uh, sensitive, we are open, we really know a person when he is very angry, right? This morning is the four areas I want to touch about. Uh, what causes anger, recognize the past pain, what to do with anger, and how to overcome. Uh, we attended a seminar many years ago called Anger Resolution. It is 30 hours. So in 30 minutes, I'm trying to give you the anger resolution. In other words, it's very complex. It's very complicated. There are many issues involved. It has to do with personality. It has to do with background. It has to do with how we handle our life, etc. So it's not so easy. After a sermon today, you have overcome anger. Of course, it's a, it's a complicated issue. All right? But at least we are aware. At least we know some of the circumstances. And then we have, by the grace of the Lord, He can help us to overcome bit by bit. All right? By the grace of the Lord. What causes anger sometimes we think is inborn, like born like this. Yeah. The DNA of my grandfather went to my father and not to me, etc., etc. We are sometimes we think it is an intergenerational curse. Uh, we think it's like that. Or maybe, maybe we, we have learned anger. Where did we learn from? Parents, huh? huh? Parents' example. No, my, my father is quite hot tempered, like, huh? Uh, although I don't blame him, but uh, a lot of time when he drives, he said at the back, when he gets angry, wow, we, we show it in his driving and he will shout and scold. I say like that now. Lah. And of course, now by the grace of the Lord, God give me grace and power. But we, we learn, we learn. If somebody overtakes you, he gets angry. So it's, we think, oh, correct, huh? 
Somebody OT, I get angry as well. My father's got angry. So we learn from parents. And parents' conflicts really in a home. It's the parents quarreling and quarreling. We think it's normal. Get married, quarrel. Because parents. So a lot of time we learn, it may be inborn in some character. We can also learn. Learn from, from, from this example. And it can be a, a reaction to frustration. Really. It can be because we are unjustly humiliated. We are very frustrated. Or our ego is offended. Especially men, huh? cannot tahan. Your ego is the offender and you, uh, uh, a lady overtake you in the car. Oh, yo, I'm very offended. Lady overtake me. I'm malu. Oh, someone where, where would put that one? No. So get prejudice, you get offended. Our ego, our ego, right? A lot of time, no? Men's ego, la. of course, women got ego, so la, huh? Women's vanity, la. but men's ego, right? We, 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 we react out of our frustration or manliness, all right? This is the thing that causes us anger, right? All right. So we need to try to identify the root cause of anger. It's usually past hurts or grief. The past hurts or grief, all right? Uh, or a mixture of both. It is grief as well as hurt. Our, our, our unresolved problem right now as well as the past, right? And, and, and we have a tension button. You don't know where the button is. It can be here, can be here, can be here, can be here. In the body. Somewhere in the body, the tension button. It erupts when new offenses reminds us of old experiences. We don't always know a new person. Wow, before getting married, he's so nice. I have to get married, different story. Because they live together. Uh, and suddenly, oh, a tension button. No, never knew during courtship, so nice. Huh? I remember one time it was... Uh, before I got married, I was with my wife and the family. We were going for a trip to Klang. I was sitting in front of my father-in-law. And uh, I don't know what I said. La, some kind of a joke. La. Suddenly, he got angry and the whole car got quiet. La. They know what I said wrongly, but I didn't know. La. I'm an I'm innocent guy, right? Tension button. Uh, so sometimes we don't store the tension button. We have that in the chair. Sometimes for nothing, the pastor preached something, touch the tension button. Angry with pastor law. It's family all over the time. So it's a, it's, a, it's a past hurt, not resolved, not healed, or a guilt. We felt guilty about it, we are not overcome it, and then we are reminded of our past to the tension button. Matthew 5, 21 and 24. Uh, this is a very powerful verse. Jesus said, I tell you that anyone who is angry with his brother or sister will be subject to judgment. Wow, right? Therefore, if you are offering your gift at the altar and they remember that your brother or sister has something against you, what are you what you're supposed to do? First, go and reconcile to them. Then come and offer your gift. Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 5, 6, 7, a very powerful sermon. A lot of principle, a lot of practical. If you can learn it and practice it, I tell you the kingdom of God will come. So this is one of Jesus' teaching. So Jesus dealt with very practical issues. It's not just coming and, and feel good and go to heaven. I pat your back, you pat my back. Jesus, deal with anger. Right? You have an anger problem, you have a problem. You are subject to judgment. Serious. So you remember somebody has offended you, against you, you first go and reconcile. Scout him that first. Settle it first. Reconcile. Settle and, 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 and bring that forgiveness and reconciliation first and then you come and offer the gift. So that's what Jesus teaches about anger. A lot of times we assume our past has will be forgotten. Huh? Our past has is gone already. I thought, I thought it's gone, it's finished. Huh? But it's an unresolved issue. Unless resolved through Forgiveness. Unless it's resolved to forgiveness, it will continue when tension points are triggered. Unless you really release that forgiveness, you're forgiven the person, and there's a reconciliation. Ah, this is a different issue, right? So a, a lot of times, the past issues, we carry on. We carry on. And we carry on. And resolve, right? Secondly, the recognize the past pain in our lives. Okay, this is the second ma major point. Uh, of course, 
the pain of rejection while we were young. This is a, a big issue. If a child is rejected by parents, they have bitterness. Children, huh? if they are rejected by parents. Uh, Esau wanted to kill Jacob, Genesis chapter 27. Uh, because Esau had a grudge against Jacob because of the blessing his father had given him. For many years, really, as a child, Esau and Jacob, they wrestled with all those. He has to do with his, uh, the birthright issue, but uh, uh, Jacob stole his brother's blessing and he had bitterness. He felt rejected by his brother, by his parents even. So for many years, when, when Jacob, after he, he worked for his father-in-law, I think for 7, 14 years, and he came back after 20 years, I think 21 years, he came back, Esau was waiting for Jacob with his army. Yeah, grudge. The pain of rejection hurt for many years, not resolved. But it was a good ending to the story. Anyway, the pain of rejection. Number two is unchangeable features, mocked. It's another painful experience of childhood, right? Uh, it's very difficult for adolescents, especially teenagers. They have to learn to accept unchangeable features of the life. Physical, mental capacity, uh, giftedness, etc., etc., etc. As a teenager, as you grow up, uh, there, there are many things in our life we have to accept ourselves, right? And sometimes we cannot accept it. Maybe we, are, we don't want to, we are too short or too fat or too whatever. We cannot accept our physical capacity. If we compare, our parents compare with us, we're very angry because it's unchangeable. We are born like this. We're unchangeable. And people laugh at us. They bully us really, right? Uh, when, when a child is mocked, when a child is mocked uh, and laughed at, there is a, a devastating blow to his self-esteem. During adolescent time, especially in children, when they go through this problem, uh, they, they have been mocked at. This is a problem. It's unchangeable. There, there are many, as we grow in life, as adults, you know, realize there are many things we cannot change. We accept ourselves and we overcome. Uh, but because children face this as unchangeable, they get mocked, all right? And then the grief, the grief of favoritism. This is a problem. In life, we have many siblings, and uh, the, the favoritism is seen as rejection by the, and, and the parents favor somebody, then another sibling, another sibling. So, you, the pain of really reject the grief of favoritism. Joseph's brother resented special favor they has received. And because of, of that, you know the story, right? Joseph's brother, Joseph had a special favor from, from the father, and the father gave him a multi colored coat, right? And the brothers got so jealous of Joseph. Finally, they sold Joseph to slavery, all because of favoritism. Okay, this is a problem. The grief of favoritism. So as parents, huh, by, of course, parents, we, we somehow we like certain of our children more than the other, but we cannot show it. Very difficult not to show it. Huh? But as much as possible, equal share, equal this, equal that, as much as possible, we try and do it. Otherwise, when the child feels it, you're not a favorite child. Then comes the problem. The grief of favoritism. All these are childhood traumas. After we are adults, after we are married, after we are in the 50s, 60s, even 70s, you always you still remember childhood trauma, you know? Because it's not healed. The traumas can still affect our life. So the pain of the past. What to do? How, how do you respond to anger? A lot of time. There are three, three things we can do. We, we suppress it. We, we deny it uh, and we pretend it's not there. It's there. But we try and suppress it. We, we, we don't acknowledge that we have anger, right? Uh, we, we bear it. The, the more we suppress it, the deeper. It goes underground. You know, inside us. Subconsciously, it haunts us later. Because it's not dealt with man. We still have the anger. We still felt we are unfairly treated. We still felt bullied. You know? So all this, we suppress it, we suppress it, we suppress it. It will come out again. In anger, right? Right. And the consequence, depression as well as bitterness. A lot of times you trace bitterness, it comes back to this anger that is suppressed. 
and not dealt with. So the first response, which is not good, suppressed anger. The second response is uh, explicit too, it's not good. <laughs> All right. That guy is knocking at a wall, right? Uh, the modern psychiatrist sometimes think, let fly like anger. Let go la. Whack the guy la. Bang the guy la. You know, in Singapore, there's a, there's a television show that tells us when you get angry, you pay the guy, go to the shop and bang, take a hammer and bang the pottery la. Bang there and, and release your frustration. No? You pay money to do that. Okay? You let fly, modern psychiatrist tells us. And you slam the door, you bang your fist through the wall, you hit the golf ball hard and, and, and look like the golf ball is the boss. Hit him hard. Yeah, release the anger. And I, I know a personal uh, relative, la, I said, don't say who, but too close to home. I know that when he got angry, he used his fist and he, I don't know whether he banged the wall or banged the table and he bruised his hand and asked me how to help him. I've got my classmate who is a, a bone surgeon. And thank the Lord, it helped. Huh? So a lot of times we, we get angry in frustration, we let go. La. We let go our frustration. All right, and then we get other things. The danger is the action reinforces the anger. It doesn't really heal the anger. It reinforces the anger, right? And, and, and the word said in anger can determine our destiny. Wow. Don't simply say things when you're angry. Don't say, I don't express my anger, mom. Freedom of speech. When you express it wrongly, it reinforces it and also can affect the person. So expressing it uh, indiscriminately is no good. Right? Just because you're the expressive kind. The third possible response is you displace it. You let go on somebody else. All right? uh, we, we take our anger on the innocent, the weak ones. So we become bullies. Huh? That's why in the, in the schools, in the offices, you can't, the bullies, huh? they let go because they displace their anger right? on the weaker one. Right? The wife abuse. The husband has been humiliated at work, so he goes back home in his frustration. He abuses his wife. Right? That is also no good. Displace anger on somebody else, on the weaker vessel. Or the other way around, the husband abu being abused. Uh, a, a verbal lashing at the husband. The wife can also abuse the husband. Huh? Both ways can happen. Right? They, they, they can speak fast, speak sharp. Can also be... Uh, husband abuse, and also child abuse, because this is a, this is a pitiful case. Parents' uncontrollable anger and the children have been will be scarred the rest of their life. Anger not dealt with, not resolved with, not healed very often. Either we suppress it, we release it, or we displace it. All these are not good responses. How, how do we overcome anger? There's a story here in the Bible parable of the merciless servant. You know the story? Right? The master have a servant owed him thousands of gold, gold coins. And he came to the master. The master said, you owe me so much, you will go to jail and your family, you can never repay. It's beyond him. He came and asked for mercy. The master said, okay, never mind. I forgive you. Go free. Nothing. Cancel his debt. The same servant went back home and somebody just owed him a couple of dollars. And he said, you must repay me. Uh, send me to and he, he prayed for mercy, but this guy was forgiven much, refused to forgive him, and sent him to jail. And the servant saw what this guy did. He reported to the master. The master was so angry. I forgive you thousands and thousands of dollars, but you for didn't forgive the guy who owed you just a couple of dollars. The master threw him in jail to be tormented the rest of his life. So, that how, how to overcome anger? First of all, we must reflect on God's mercy. Not God's grace, not God's love, but God's mercy for us. We are sinners. We are destined for hell. We, we deserve to die. We deserve to be crucified, but God forgive us. Cancel our debt. All our sins, all our burdens, all our problems, just cancel it completely. God's mercy, right? Uh, the, the Heavenly Father has forgiven us. Praise God, right? And, and, and the only way we can come before the Lord is come to the Lord in prayer, especially contemplative prayer. 
I know in, in, in faith line, uh, you have the contemporary praise, wonderful, uh, to be quiet, to be silent, and to hear uh, of nobody except God. And this is some, one, of the, one of the ways we can be healed of our past hurts. Not to preaching, not to hearing a sermon, not even to praise as much as good as these are. It's when we come before the Lord in quietness, in humility, and say nothing and come before the presence of the Lord and let Him be the one healing our inner hurts. He may bring things out in our life where we will let go of the past, surrender, and forgive. And unless we do that very often, a lot of things doesn't work. You can go through counseling, you can hear about anger resolution, but it's when you come one-on-one in the presence of the Lord. And in the process of it, God heals us. And we experience God's love and peace. That is an experience. The forgiveness, the peace of God, the love of the Lord can bring all our past trauma. Psychologists cannot do that. Psychiatrists cannot do that. Tranquilizers cannot do that. I know some of these things helps us temporarily. But at the end of the day, only God heals us through prayer. And the peace of God that passes all understanding will keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So, number one, how to overcome anger? Reflect on God's mercy. All of us are sinners saved by grace. God is so merciful to all our lives. And we need to be merciful as well. Number two, realize that vengeance belongs to God. Nobody gets away forever. The guy may do bad things he gets me for a little while, but later on, don't worry about that. No, you believe in the law of karma. <laughs> uh, it's what you sow, you reap la, in a Christian context. Don't worry about that. That guy may be a corrupt judge. La. He may be a wicked businessman. La. He can be a wife abuser. La. He may seem to get away with it at the end of the day. You'll be caught up. Nobody gets away forever. God has a way of catching up. All right, that's what the Bible tells us, right? Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room to God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to avenge, I will repay, said the Lord. When we revenge on somebody, we get angry with somebody, we hurt that guy, we also hurt ourselves. We we, we will feel guilty after we hurt the person. So leave it to God. Very often he does a better job than us. He knows what to do. Uh, vengeance is mine. God knows that you've been abused, you've been taken advantage of. God will know how to deal with the person sooner or later. No matter how big the person is. It could be King, King Herod, it could be King Nebuchadnezzar, it could be a violent man, a boss, it could be a millionaire or a doctor, whatever it is. Don't worry about that. God, vengeance belongs to the Lord. Praise God. Only God has a right and wisdom to judge. That's why the Bible tells don't judge anybody. Judge not that you may not be judged. There's only one judge, praise the Lord, because we all don't know the facts. Sometimes the people who hurt us, they themselves are going through difficulties, and then we judge them, and then we quarrel with them, and then we, we will destroy their life. Only God knows the grace, how to bring the conviction. That's why we don't judge. God is the only righteous has the right to judge and the wisdom to judge. Very often when we try and bring revenge, you destroy the person's life and destroy your own life as well. So vengeance belongs to God. Remember God's mercies, first of all, we don't deserve it. And then realize that don't worry, you don't need to rectify now. God will do it in His time. Thirdly, don't let anger lead to sin. I guarantee you, very often when we get angry, you lead us to sin. That's what the Bible tells us. Ephesians 4, 26. In your anger, do not sin. King James Version, be angry, but sin not. In other words, you can be angry, but don't sin. You can feel the anger, uh, sometimes, oh, that righteous indignation. You've been unjustifiably abused. You feel it. Don't sin. The, the next step, uh, the next few seconds, uh, whatever in between there, when you make the wrong choices, don't let the sun go down while you're still angry. Very often we, 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 we apply this in a, a marriage and couple, when you quarrel, make sure before you sleep, uh, settle it, otherwise in the bed, you'll be tossing up and down, tossing, tossing, tossing. You ever experienced that? You cannot sleep because quarrel with wife or husband. Hey, don't look at me like that. 
I guess that went through. Huh? So you don't, you don't settle it. You're angry. Uh, don't let the sun go down. Because when you, when you get angry and you go to sleep, the, the roots don't come out like lalang. Huh? Overnight, the roots go deep and you settle it as, as much as possible before you sleep. That's what it tells us in verse 26, 27. And do not give the devil a foothold. Very often, the, the devil cannot enter our life. We are protected. But when we are angry, we open the door for the devil. You give him a photo. When he enters into our life through anger, and all of them, the next thing is sinning. If we don't let him, he cannot come inside, right? And, and get rid of all bitterness and rage and anger, brawling and slander, etc. So Ephesians tells us, you must deal with anger, all right? Yeah, I can feel angry, but don't sin. All right. Uh, and don't let the devil enter in your life when you get angry. And then get rid of anger, rage, and bitterness. Get rid of it. You got to get rid of it. Otherwise, it's unresolved. It will manifest itself. We are responsible and we are capable to deliberate our action. We are responsible how we handle anger. We are responsible and we are capable not to get angry, not to further let go of our anger. We are capable, we are responsible, right? So be angry, but don't sin. Get rid of anger by forgiving. That's why the Sermon on the Mount is so powerful. Forgive. How many times, by the way, there are seven deadly sins, there are also seven Christian virtues, all right? Powerful virtues. One of the Christian virtues is forgiveness. All right? Get rid of anger by forgiving. So how to overcome anger? Forgive the person. Very often it's easy to talk about it and preach about it, but really when we, when we actually try to do it, it will, it will take some time to rest and come before the Lord and resolve and pray and come down. But soon, soon or, sooner or later, we, will have, we need to forgive. That's the only way to overcome this area. Or bitterness and anger is to forgive. Now, I've gone through a lot of hurts in my own life as a pastor, members leaving the church, angry, criticizing, etc. If I don't forgive, I'm dead already by now. Many times buried already. But I have to forgive. Right? By the grace of the Lord. I have to overlook and, and overcome, right? Get rid of it by forgiving. That's the only way, all right? And then yield your rights to God. Now, when we, when we get angry, we always say, it's my right, ma'am. Hey, I'm right, he's wrong. Huh? Hey, the guy said, you're, you're wrong, I'm right. Huh? Everybody seems to be right in their own eyes, right? Everybody thinks, the wife thinks he's right, the husband thinks he's wrong, the children think they all have our rights. Every country got their rights, every race got their rights, all have rights. But when we come before the Lord to overcome anger, one of the secrets is to yield your rights. Surrender your rights. Many years ago in Singapore, they have the, what they call, they have a traffic day. I don't know whether they still have it. There's a sign there, yield your way. Singapore, you know, drive Singapore. Singapore, Singapore people, they're more uh, well-mannered in driving than Malaysian, no? <laughs> They've been taught to yield. Yield your path. Let the guy go straight. We in Malaysian, nah, tell the hong, 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 ding, hong, hong, hong. We go. We are right, sir. Right? So, the, the way to overcome anger is to surrender our rights even though we are right. The way we manifest that right is wrong already. All right? So, surrender our rights is very crucial to overcome anger. Even though we seem to be right, surrender it. The pineapple story. This is a true story. All right? uh, there was a missionary in Papua New Guinea. His name is Otto Conning. True story, he's a guy, he's an he's a, he's American missionary. He went to reach out the natives, you know, missionaries. Huh? Sometimes they, they, they give up their home and the comfort and the luxury. They go to a foreign land and reach these uh, natives in Papua New Guinea. Some of them are hunters, and they went there and tried to save them. But they were not responsive. All right. The missionary had a plot of land and he planted pineapples. But somehow these, these natives, uh, they, they come and steal his pineapple, right? Uh, they, they come and steal his pineapple and he got very angry. The, the, apparently, this culture, stealing is not sin, right? To them, it's, the land belongs to us, ma. 
You find you, you plant the pineapple, it's our land, we just take what is ours. So the, the mission got so very angry with the natives and they, because they stole his pineapples. All right. And then the missionary threatened them. He also also a missionary doctor. He has got a place, he gives medicine. And because you stole my point, I closed my clinic. The people got sick, huh? cannot get medicine now. So you, unless you give me back my pineapples. Can you imagine that? The missionary doing this, right? Uh, so this missionary went to visit the uh, IBLP seminar, Institute of Basic Life Principles. I don't know whether you've attended by Bill Gothard. Many years ago, this story is true. This missionary came back on furlough. He attended this seminar, and here was this preacher say, it's important to yield your rights to God. Yeah, the pineapple is yours, but they belong to God. So let God be the one to take care of his plantation. You surrender the rights. Whoever takes it, don't worry. Yield your rights. So he went back home, this missionary. God convicted. He said, ah, I'm going to do that. And he gave his pineapple plantation, whatever he has to God. All right. All right. This is a story he was telling. And the natives come to this missionary and say, Now you become a Christian. The natives. He's been preaching the gospel to them. They never get converted. He, they only see him get angry. He has got all the money and authority. And now he's, he stopped getting angry, this missionary. He said, now you become a Christian. What, the missionary said, what do you mean? I've been a Christian all the world. Now only you behave like a Christian because you don't get angry with us. And the ladies were wondering, since when you, 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 you have this problem solved? Three months ago, he said, I went to the seminar. I've decided to give my pineapple plantation to God. So the, the plantation now belongs to God. So if you steal, you are stealing from God. So the native said, no wonder, missionary. Ever since you gave your pineapple to God, we have been getting sick. You know? uh, we have illnesses, we have miscarriages, we have problems, etc., etc. Because they said, now we are stealing from God. <laughs> and God is punishing us. That's what the native says. In a way, it's true. Huh? God is the one dealing with their lives. But the missionary life was transformed. And eventually, many conversions and revival. Oh, it's true, isn't it, in Christian life? Christian ministry, as a pastor, as a worker, as whatever it is. A lot of times, we, we want to preach the gospel, la, we share Christ, la, but we get angry, la, we get jealous, la, we abuse people la, in the company, la, and we, we steal company. Time, la, maybe not money. La. We, we don't behave ourselves and we expect people to accept Christ. But, hey, you better become a Christian. Right. So he, he overcome came his anger because he surrendered his pineapple to God and he yielded his rights. And from that time onwards, a powerful impact. Praise God. Anger destroys relationships. The most important thing in life is relationship, right? Loving one another, loving God and one another. Everything is relationship. How we relate with one another, accept one another, be patient with one another. This is the whole life. The whole life God is, is teaching us to, to, to yield our rights to Him and surrender to Him. His relationships. Husband and wife and children and parents and members and society is relationship. And anger destroys relationship. All right? All right. Anger is contrary to the character of Christ. I, I know we said Jesus got angry man, in, a, in a temple. Uh, cleaning, that was only one time. And that was because they, they used a the house of God and, and, and do business and, and destroy them. It was angry and righteous anger. Not many of us have righteous anger. Most of them are unrighteous, right? And it is contrary to Christ's character. Christ's character is forgiveness, is loving, is caring. So anger doesn't do that, right? Uh, James 1, 19 to 20. Let everyone be swift to hear and slow to wrath. Quick to listen, but slow to anger, slow to wrath. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. When we get angry, most of the time we cannot manifest the works of God. Whatever ministry, whatever preaching, teaching, or healing ministry, if we don't have that righteousness of God, all right, we, we, then the, the wrath of man, whether you, are, you, you lose your time, you lose everything. You lose your ministry. You lose your testimony, right? So the, rich, the root issue is unresolved past hurts. 
No excuses. We are responsible. Don't blame your father. Don't blame your, your experiences. Yeah, maybe background, but don't blame. Now we have to make amends. Now in the light, God give us a spirit. There's no excuses. We are responsible for anger. Not your parents' fault, not the pastor's fault. We have to be responsible. All right? The key is forgive. And you, your rights. No more rights. All our rights belong to God. If any man comes to me, Jesus said, he will take up his cross daily and follow me. Surrender your rights. No more rights. Everything you have belongs to God. Let him handle. And take the hum takes humility to ask for forgiveness and receive God's grace. Whether we are a husband or a wife or a parent, asking forgiveness. Receive God's grace. This is the beginning of healing. And when God deals with us little by little by little by little, then we are cleansed, we are healed. Then it's easier to do ministry. Ministry becomes a pleasure and loving people and understanding people when our anger is resolved and healed. It's a deadly sin because it affects all of our lives. Praise God.